Hello and welcome to the Admin Bar, the community that helps you streamline your processes, sharpen your skills, and demand higher paying projects. My name is Kyle Van Dusen from Ogle Web Design just outside of Fort Worth, Texas. And with me, as always, is my friend Matt Siebert from Matthew Siebert Design. I almost did that in one breath, but I couldn't quite make it, dude. I'm sorry. I'd let you down. It was close. Next time, try harder. Practice. But, yeah, uh, I yeah. should practice. <laughs> How's so, it going today? It's going well. Uh, everything's everything's moving along. Projects are good. I'm happy. Life's good. Let's do awesome. This. Let's talk about selling. End game. End game. Yes, we brought uh, Hans back on the show. You might know him from such places as Termageddon, uh, where you can get a free agency policy at termageddon.com. If I didn't do that, Hans is going to do it anyway. So I just got it out of the way there. Um, but uh, we're bringing Hans back on because before he. Uh, um, launched Termageddon full time. He actually had an agency and uh, he sold that agency. And me and Matt have talked about this many times in the past about, um, you know, what is the end game for your company? Are you going to die behind the keyboard? Are you going to just let this fade away when you start doing something else? Or could you possibly turn this business into something you could uh, sell and make some more money off of? And that's exactly what Hans did. So let's welcome in Hans and say hello and ask him how he's doing today. Hans, how are you doing today? I'm well. I'm excited for this conversation. I know. I feel really amped up right now. I'm just like know, talking right? fast. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> the mark Let's of do a it good all episode. in one breath. Yes. Everybody's answers must be in one breath or we're, it's, we're, it's going to get cut out. <laughs> How are things in, uh, in windy Chicago today? Uh, things are good. It's about 85 degrees. I'm working out of my spring room nowadays. So I'm like kind of in a sauna, but... It's as close as I'm going to get to working out. So, I, you know, it's it's good for me. Works. That's close yeah, enough. Sweat it out. Um, the other day I mowed the lawn on. and I'm like, worked out today. It's impressive. <laughs> That's impressive. Yeah. <laughs> Not bad at all. Awesome. So let's just uh, let's dive into this. So why don't you tell us a little bit about the agency that you did have or how you started this agency or grew it or let's kind of get some of the backstory so people can kind of uh, familiarize themselves with it and kind of see themselves in your story. Great. Yeah. So um, in 2012, I started a, a full service uh, digital marketing and web design company. Um, and as time went on, um, I was able to grow in staff. Uh, and um, I ultimately brought in some investors. Um, the investors helped us kind of get to where we wanted to get faster and sacrificed equity for that. Um, and then, uh, we made a fundamental shift about, uh, probably 2016, uh, when we made a decision rather than trying to be good at everything, let's focus in on one thing. And we decided web design, um, and application development were, 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 was going to be that focus. Um, so we got rid of our marketing side of business and we focused in on web design and software development. And that was primarily because my staff, uh, was experienced in that and that's what they enjoyed the most, um, Marketing just wasn't for us, even though I'm a huge fan of marketing um, uh, as a service offering. Uh, it just wasn't for us. So uh, we hunkered down, we focused on our skills, and that actually proved to be very fruitful. Uh, I'll throw out a little piece of advice, not on the exit strategy side, but like by focusing in on web design and software development, you know, we were missing a key part of what a website needs to do, which is generate business through marketing. So what we did was we partnered with marketing companies in and around the Chicagoland area. I'd go to their room or I'd go to the room. I'd go to their office and knock on their door. Open their bedroom. <laughs> Weird, but <laughs> unannounced. Hey, hey, how's it going? <laughs> Let's be partners. Uh, no, 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 not, not that way. I mean, business. I know I'm in your bedroom, but, <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, no, it was, it was very beneficial because I was finding marketing agencies that were full service back in the day as well, but they shifted and got rid of web design and application development and focused just on marketing. The, the recurring revenue um, retainer-based marketing strategy does not work great when you have project-based website builds that take an, a massive amount of hours to build. So mm -hmm. um, I partnered up with uh, marketing agencies that shared that same vision of like, all right, I'm just marketing, but I need a web partner I can trust. And me with my company, I was like, I'm a web develop. I run a web development company, and we need marketing partners that we can trust. Um, and that created a nice referral system uh, where we get phone calls every day from our agency partners. And we had about six, you know, but they would feed us 10, 20k websites, and they already had the warm introductions. You know, hey, and if you think about it, the marketing company wants to 
um, improve their, they want to create the best ROI for their clients. Mm -hmm. And when a client comes to them, they have, they have a crap website. Well, they have an incentive as a marketing agency to build a better website so that there's a higher conversion uh, when when doing the marketing yeah. campaign. Hence why everybody tries to be the all encompassing thing, you yes. know? Right. And yes. I mean, and, and, like with a with a solid website, I mean, it's so much easier to track that ROI, too. So I'm sure it looks good on their end where they can say, hey, this is what's happening. And you can give them the analytics and say, like, it's working, which which is yes. awesome. Yeah, exactly. It tells the full story. So there's pros and cons to all of it. If you're full service, there's pros to that too. Like, you know, I just found my pro by hunkering down. Mm -hmm. um, so that was about three years ago. And then, um, and we remained stable at about 12 employees. I mean, we certainly had our ups and downs. That's for sure. I mean, we're, it's a tough business, but it's, it's a fun one. Um, and then, yeah, come uh, January-ish, um, you know, the decision was made between the partners and I to you know, start working on either raising some capital to go further with the business or to sell the business. And um, uh, we, we kind of put it out to the market and I'll get into the details of that shortly here. Um, but we connected with a, a 60 person web shop out of Des Moines, Iowa, and uh, he had done a few acquisitions in the past. And um, I really liked him. I thought he was a great fit to take the company further, further than I ever could. Um, so we decided to sell the business to him and, um, and yeah, it was awesome. Like he, he was a phenomenal guy. He's been upstanding ever since. He gave me approval to have this conversation today with you guys. Um, I asked him in advance. Uh, uh, and yeah, it's, it was uh, a really cool experience. But I, I'm looking forward today to sharing you know, some of the details in the way I did things. Um, not that I did everything right. I certainly did way more wrong than I did right. But there are some things I did right and some things I figured out <clears throat> that I think are really important in sharing in today's discussion. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, yeah, you know, like I, I, I don't, I can't speak for everybody out there, but I do think that exit strategy is one of the last things that people do think about. I mean, embarrassingly enough, I didn't really think about it until uh, last year at WordCamp when somebody, who, Kyle, do you remember who that was? I don't remember her name. Um, I, it'll come to me. Okay. But well, I regardless, I mean, about. I hadn't, I hadn't thought about it. I didn't know, you know, I mean, I started my business when I was, I was real young, you know, and I named it after myself, which that's a little bit difficult when you go to sell something and considering I was, I was really, I started as a freelancer and it was all me. So again, really difficult to sell something, but, uh, you know, with my eyes opened after that, uh, that talk at WordCamp, then I really started like I I I I'm if I remember right, Kyle and I looked at each other during the talk and we we're like, oh shit. <laughs> like yeah. this is this is definitely something that, you know, everybody really needs to to be thinking about. You know, regardless of whether or not you're gonna sell it or just kill it or let it, you know. For for reference, it was Corey Ashton and she actually <laughs> has like a askcory.com. She's okay, a awesome in Austin. That's amazing. I actually um I met with Corey uh when looking huh. to sell my business. Uh, okay. enough, uh, she actually uh, had family in the Chicagoland area and decided to also swing by and take a look at our office. Uh, it wasn't a good fit. We decided like we both both parties were like, hey, you know, this is great, but we're going to move elsewhere. Mm -hmm. um, and this is part of the dating scene of, of an exit strategy, which I'll get to later today, too. Uh, but small it's world. wild that you yeah. just brought up Corey Ashton. I'm like, what? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And so her talk was kind of about that, about how, you know, she built up recurring revenue for her business stuff and it made her business very sellable because she had uh, so much, you know, to, to show potential people, uh, buyers, you know, how much the business was really worth. So one question that, and this is probably like further in the steps, but I just got to ask while it's on my mind, where do you put the for sale sign? Like, I don't know where you go to sell a web design agency. Like I have no idea where like Craigslist, that would seem kind of shady. Like I don't want to make it in a parking lot. Place. Yeah, you yeah, just yeah. swap yeah. up the hero image with just a big stamp that says for sale. <laughs> for sale. Right. That's and wouldn't that, projects. <laughs> wouldn't that kind of warn your customers off so how do you like where, where do you go to do this even so um bizbuysell.com b-i-z for biz bizbuysell.com i paid 60 dollars i think for six months of exposure um or maybe it was 100 bucks i don't know 200 bucks i don't care really I, it was it was nominal for the sake of what i was trying to achieve mm -hmm. but i thought it was kind of like a scam so i was like all right whatever i'm, I'm blowing this money i posted it within within an hour, I already had an inquiry. By the end of three days, I had over three dozen inquiries. Wow. 
So uh, bizbuysell.com, I cannot stress that enough, is a wonderful, wonderful place to go to buy and sell companies. Um, and that is, um, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of them. I really should leave a good review for them. Um, I was very impressed. And really what it is, what a it, it's a it's a, it's like a job board but it's like a it's like a buy and sell company board where people buy and sell companies and it's growing quickly so um yeah i have i can't say good enough things about my experience with that company um out of the 36 people that inquired um i would say 18 of them were legit um the other 18 were like i don't just i don't know why you're talking like, to me lose like or yeah yeah i don't know what that is but yes exactly <laughs> <laughs> um, window shoppers yeah, people just not in our space. And it was mm -hmm. so clear. Like, they're like, you know, oh, I really want to buy all your, like, what there's a, just, just an utter confusion on what the company did for a living. But then right. I would say about half of them were people in the business. Um, they've been doing it for years um, or they're right on the fringe. Maybe they, like, you know, offer a solution, like a, a scalable solution and they're looking to add staff to their team, mm -hmm. something along those lines. Um, but yeah, 18 of them were legit. Um, and, and that's the other thing. They'll each ask you a series of their own questions. So with the job board, you post some basic information. And I like freaked out. I was stressing about like what I post and all my asking price and all that stuff. It doesn't matter. It really does not matter. Just post something, get it up. And then it's actually the conversations you have afterwards um, that you have to be prepared for. Um, because each inquiry took like an hour of my time to address each inquiry. So I would, I, I answered 18 people's questions, probably 10 questions per person. And then about nine of them sent me follow-up questions. And then about four of them sent me follow-up questions from, from there. Um, and then there was like three people who made offers. Um, and I picked the one I liked the most. Um, <clears throat> so, um, the, the person I selected, I, I, liked him because uh one uh he had a history of buying companies in the past meaning that this isn't his first rodeo uh two uh he um was a family man he was a good human being uh three he picked up my phone call every time i called him um and that was really valuable to me and four he shared with me his vision he's like look you know i love the brand that you've created in the, in chicago um i love the staff the staff is wildly talented and they they're they are they're genius like and um and what can I do? To, you know, I just want to retain this company. I'm going to learn from them just as much as they're going to learn from us, and we're going to grow together. And and I love that message. So he retained all staff. Um, uh, he allowed me to exit and move on. Um, you know, with Termageddon. Did I, did I mention that Termageddon? Who, who? How do you spell that again? <laughs> the greatest company ever. Free policy for web agencies. <laughs> the um, greatest company ever. <laughs> don't look that up though. Let's get wild. <laughs> um, <laughs> But yeah, you know, with that, with, with some of the other people were like, well, we want you to be around for a year. And I, I just didn't want that because I was ready to move on to my next venture um, that was picking up steam. So, um, so yeah, th those were the, the, my reasons for selecting this guy. Um, and, 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 you know, one of the, one of the lessons I learned early on in life is trust your gut. And I trust, I trust this guy and, and, and knock on wood. I mean, he's still been phenomenal um, ever since. So that's awesome. Well, that's awesome. So that that definitely helps answer that question. So let's go back a little bit. Let's go back towards the beginning of your agency. Did you when when you formed this agency or when you started to grow or when you saw that this agency was becoming successful? Was the end game something you had considered? No. So um, no, it wasn't. And I, I'd imagine I'm probably here. There's people listening right now. Probably also got into the web design business. I'm guessing I could be wrong because, um, because of the reasons why I, pro I got involved. Um, uh, I was one of the first employees at Groupon. Um, Groupon is that daily deals company, mm -hmm. um, wild fun company. But once it went public, I became a little disconnected with their, uh, outlook on how to approach their, uh, small business space. Um, and is my own opinion, but I felt like they were taking advantage of small business owners who didn't know how to market themselves online correctly. And that was my fuel to my fire to start my, my agency, um, helping small businesses, being the hand that holds them through the process. They're so passionate about what they do in their business, but they don't know how to broadcast that online. I wanted to be that person to help them. So I started with ideals. Um, the other idea, which I imagine many people share is like, I kind of feel like when I'm working for someone else, I feel like I'm a, kind of like a slave to someone else. And like, and, and it just doesn't, it doesn't work for me. Um, I just kind of have that entrepreneurial bug. Um, so like, those are my two reasons. Like I was passionate about helping small business owners and I was really passionate about doing it myself. Um, so that was how it all started. Um, but you know, the moment like staff comes on board, 
um, you know, that your ideal shift, like you care about taking, making sure they're paid first, you know, making sure they're covered and like, you know, payroll is a whole discussion and a whole separate conversation in itself. Uh, right. But you, you, you know, when you just because you start one way doesn't mean you end that same with those same ideals, those same outlooks, and everything. My ideals have completely shifted as a human being since the beginning. Uh, but you know, maybe was, that's what happened to Groupon. Light bulb. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, you you know, companies age they 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 change. You go from like babies to you know toddlers to children to teenagers and then adults and then they sure. die um, and that's a good re reminder as well companies die like when you look at the grand scheme of like the last 100 200 years like there's like one company that's lasted more than 200 years that's completely false information but you get my drift like look it up yeah I like know. what's I, I was so obsessed with like creating a company and running a company i was so obsessed with this insignificant thing in life Life. What really matters is being a human being and having relationships with one another. Like it doesn't companies just generate profit, use profit to do great things in this world. And 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 that was something I concluded to. And I think that was probably about two years ago. And that's when I kind of shifted my mind, which was like, what do I want to do? Because I started to become disconnected. Once we went to just web design and software development, as much as like our operating procedures were improving, my staff was becoming much better at like just taking stuff down. And, and I became kind of a joke, like, oh, keep Hans out of it. Like, we'll just knock out this client. We'll knock out this project. And I mean, talk about like the most beautiful thing that could happen is like your staff becomes um, uh, enabled to not only take what you've taught them, but go far beyond it. I mean, that's a beautiful thing. Yeah, that's incredible. Um, yeah, but but the con for me was that like I kind of felt like I wasn't doing anything anymore, and and then I kind of started questioning like what I want to do, and 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 what I want to do is get going with a new company again, and and I, I don't think at the time I accepted that, but now that I'm here, I've accepted that, and and as time played its course, you know, um, I was structuring the business to be sold, you know, um, and and so, it wasn't intentional, but it was intentional in the sense that I was trying. I, I about three years ago, once we decided to close in on web design and software development, close in on a specific service offering, I shifted to wanting to actually run a company, to actually run a business, to have staff and, and products and services that can be offered without me being a part of the day-to-day. -day. Um, and that mental shift, um, <clears throat> as challenging as it was, uh, was beautiful. It, 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 took, it kept the company alive and started letting it, uh, allowing it to thrive, uh, which was great. So what are some of those things that kind of happened organically with the way your company grew? And then over time, as you realized you wanted to sell the company or that could be a, a something that happened, what are the things that you had set yourself up for right? And what are some of the things that you realized once you were going to sell your company or that was a possibility that you realized some things needed to change in order to make that a reality? Um, man, it, it will be hard to create a story around it because there's so many variables that go into this. Um, but, oh, man, um, like I'm thinking of things like having really detailed processes and procedures. Is that oh, something? Oh, man. Oh, yes. Like okay. So let's let's talk about that one. Standard operating procedures. The best probably the best thing I ever did for the company was that I took out the stuff that was in my mind and I wrote it on paper. Um, but more importantly than that is I created an operating system, which let's be real. It was a Google doc being like, this is the format. So not a real operating system. Like I just created a format on how my staff could also create their own operating procedures. Mm -hmm. And what we did was we collectively standardized how we do things. We used a heavy duty project management app called functionpoint.com, which really helped tell us a story about profitability on a per employee basis, profitability on a per project basis, a per client basis. Um, and, um, and that project management software it doesn't have to be function point. It, it just worked for us. Um, but project management software with good SOPs enable you, the business owner to step back and let your staff do their job. Um, and that is what I call running a business. Like you're building, you're building a company. Like, and, and, and it, is, it is truly my belief that everyone should be having an exit strategy in mind. I don't think there should be a die behind your computer mentality. Um, because the fact is, is something could happen to you the next day. And if you have staff or people that rely on your income, 
like what's going to happen if like you are the only entity that or, it runs or them? even if you don't have staff i have customers like that rely on things that i'm doing for them for their business to thrive you know yes oh yeah that's a whole other thing yeah there's um obviously i talk to web agencies every day now with termageddon um and uh <laughs> the greatest company ever dot com <laughs> um and i was talking to a guy who just uh, he's like he he had to go he had to get off the phone because someone in his industry or someone in his city was a web designer who had like hundreds of websites and he died all of a sudden and that there's like tons of si- companies in and around that city that had their websites they have no idea what to do and no one knows how to access it so he, i mean for him it was like a free for all just trying to collect as many clients and stuff and i'm like yeah you know you got to you got to be thinking about an exit strategy. Just, yeah, I think I love that for the sake of your clients as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And the, the operating procedures thing, that's something that that's tough for me, especially since I am solo. Like I don't have to explain anything I'm doing to anybody. Like for practical purposes, there's, I, I'd be talking to no one in this room, but I actually, uh, my son wanted some stuff to do this summer, right? So I've, I set up an air table board and he's doing some prospecting for me, right? And just me having to, and he's nine, so we're at a certain level, you know, but just for me having Call to your stand, grandma to start, you know, like things, right. cute things like that. <laughs> right. Um, <laughs> Uh, actually he uh he's going through these people that have ads and looking at their websites and then he he's ranking them and then giving oh me the contact information yeah so wow. uh, he, actually, he actually found a website that i made and luckily for him and luckily for me he ranked it as good so we're okay <laughs> but just just ha- but now i'm paying him for a lead to a company i already do work for so it makes no sense but anyways um that's awesome ha- having to explain to him just like procedures and why something needs to be man it was really open eye opening to me that like so many things are just the way they're done in my head with i have no explanation for it and like being able to build out some of those even small like procedures in a way that you could articulate it to somebody else makes it clearer in your own mind you know it gives you some clarity there so i think those procedures whether you're planning on selling tomorrow or not are great for your business I, you know, actually, so, so I happen to have staff. That was one breath, by the way. <laughs> nice, nice. Um, so I happen to have staff and then I learned about operating procedures. I think what you just brought up is, you know, something I never thought about because I never had the opportunity to, but for the people listening that have, that are a one person shop right now, I think you hit on something so big, which is write it down what you do, write it down and how you do it. Because what you then do is you become more honest with yourself on your mm-hmm. service offerings. Mm-hmm. You become less likely to say yes to a client that's asking you to do something you don't necessarily feel comfortable doing. And like, I, I love that idea because if you even write it down as, as awkward as that must be like, okay, I'm writing. That's the most meta thing I've ever heard. Like I'm writing operations for myself to, and I, I started a company not to be a slave, but now you're a slave to yourself. I don't know. Right. Okay. <laughs> but like, it's, it's, it's a critical idea. I think that's a really great idea to start writing it down. And, and just to give everyone just kind of like a step-by-step, like, and maybe I can give a Google doc or something like to, for people to see what this is, but like you create like the date at which you created the operating procedure, what the title of the operating procedure is like, adding um, a great one, um, adding an install in WP Engine or, you know, or, or whatever your hosting provider is. Um, the step-by-step, the logins and passwords are how to access your login and password doc and the things you do, maybe the p- default plugins you install, maybe the default plugins you delete, um, the theme you purchase, the license you purchase to implement and set up the theme, write that down. I know that it's so basic for you, but that starts to get you in the practice of thinking about how you do your business so that when a client comes to you and they're like, well, I want to do hosting on HostGator, you're like, I don't care. Like, I, I'm not seeing it in my operating procedures, so I'm not doing it. You know, mm-hmm. like, right. um, um, and, and that it, it reinforces, it probably is a great mental exercise because it'll reinforce your values and why you value a, a particular hosting provider over another. Yeah, um, it almost reinforces... You know your your. What am I trying to say? Like your your business is purpose too. Like if you if you write everything out, you can more clearly see like why am I doing this? How am I doing this? And what's what's the 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 overall purpose? And in doing that 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 alone, when a, when a potential client reaches out to you, you can say to yourself, does this fit within that purpose? And if it doesn't, then it might not be a good match. 
Yeah. And, and, and some of the issues uh, we, we, we actually identified issues, exactly what you said, like we identified issues with our operating procedures. Great example, discovery, design, development, deployment. We realized we were not charging crap for discovery. And like, that is the biggest mistake of all, because when you're not charging for discovery, your clients are not valuing discovery. Mm -hmm. And like, we realized like the majority of our budgets going to asking, getting this client truly onboarded, before we do a lick of design or a lick of code, asking every single question possible because dumb people like me, who is not technical, who doesn't have skill sets, I can ask questions and I can figure out exactly what this person's real goals are. You know, so many clients would come to me, oh, I want the prettiest website in the world. Great, we can do that. Um, and but but then I ask a further question: Why do you want a pretty site? Oh, because I want more business. You know, maybe they don't, maybe they skirt around it, but they right. eventually get to the fact that they just want more money, and and that wow, okay, we need to take a step back. They pre-prescribed themselves to wanting a pretty website because they thought that that would be what produces business. Now I have to consult this person and have them understand how the internet works. Um, right. you know, but, but, it, but by doing that in discovery, instead of launch deployment, <laughs> you are saving yourself a boatload of, you're, you're, you're reducing your risk significantly. Um, so so let's uh let's talk about some of the things you know you you talked about having to put together some processes and stuff like that or make sure all those the standard operating procedures are written down when when you go to when you go to okay i am going to sell my business maybe even before you listed it on the website or anything what kinds of things are you counting as assets towards your company so what kind of uh you might be maybe ongoing revenue or, you know, there's a lot of things about our business that aren't tangible because what we make isn't a tangible thing. So, I mean, there's even things like reputation that you might put into it or connections you have, or, you know, how do you consider what, what your business is really worth? Yeah. Um, uh, okay. So I'll just start off the top. Your clients, um, your recurring revenues, um, how many leads your website generates on a given week, month, whatever. Um, uh, how long your staff has been around, how skilled they are. Um, uh, retention is a huge part of our industry. And if you have employees that have stuck around for a very, very long time, that tells a heck of a story to a business owner who's wanting to hire talent and keep them around. Well, if you have staff that's been around for a long time in the business and they've grown with the business, like they're going to, you, you, that's a pro as well. So, um, so staff, clients, leads that your website generates, I would say, or in recurring revenues. Oh my gosh, that's a big one. So, um, and then some, some side things, um, that I would say, you know, before selling a business, you, you have to have your finances in, in, in your, in order, uh, QuickBooks. Um, I'm not going to sit here and take credit for it. In my team, I, I, my VP was handling QuickBooks and, and she did a great job. And, and, um, but it has to be in order because when you when you get those questions from all those interested buyers, all of it's finance. I mean, not all of it, but yeah, a lot of it's finance based. Um, there's a lot of technical based questions too, like what is your staff? Does your staff know this? Does your staff know this? You know, stuff like that. But um, but you know, you got to have your books in order. Um, and um, and there's one other thing. I'll, I'll remember it later. But does that answer your question? Yeah. No. No, that helps because what I'm thinking is like if you if you know what those things are that are going to be the points of value for your business when you go to list it, those are the things you could start working on now. So if you know that like employee retention is something that's going to be very beneficial to you being able to sell your company, maybe you need to start thinking about quit hiring the cheapest person and you need to get some really good people in here that you could hold on to, you know, so just trying to think of things ahead of time. You know, because I think most of us, even if, even if any one of us are going to sell our business one day and don't realize it now, like, anything we could do to start setting some of those things up ahead of time or, you know, beneficial for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I I can't preach enough. Uh, recurring revenues was a big factor of the sale. And and I am, I'm, I've been given the opportunity to share the details of the sale. Um, and I'm happy to do that today. I'm probably not going to share actual numbers just because, uh, I, I don't know. Just, I don't know. I'm not ready for that, but, uh, but I, I will share factors that are extremely important. Um, First and foremost, recurring revenues. Um, that is where you'll get what are called multiples. A multiple is like whether it's the uh, revenue, uh, a multiple of revenue or multiple of the profit from the revenue. The people buying your company want to buy business 
business. They want to buy revenue, you know, that is basically we earned it and now we want to buy it from you, you know? So recurring revenues is absolutely huge. That's why I like Termageddon, great way to generate more recurring revenues. Um, uh, but it is the critical factor because recurring revenues is actually something that you have that you've been generating every month or every year, however you bill. And you can pass that off to the very next company mm -hmm. who's going to pick it up. And clients are, clients are not going to leave. You might think you're special. You might think you have the best web design company. No, turns, I mean, I, I was very proud of my web design agency. Right. No client has ever left. Like after the sale, I heard like we lost, they lost no one. So uh, clients, they need their business to stay up, stay up to date, stay their website. So right. recurring revenues is, a, is critical. What I think there might be confusion on is like, well, what about all my project revenues I make? You know, how can I sell my project revenues? And this is something that I think web agencies need to wake up to, which is when you build a website and you're done with that project, unless you have a model to like re-sign them up three years from now for a new website and you've shown a history of doing that um, and that clients of yours have subscribed to that, if you're, if you're typical in, in terms of your website builds, you build it and maybe you get hosting and maintenance and, and do some additional things. Um, companies are not going to pay for revenues, project-based revenues you've already completed and been paid for. Like, right. why would they buy that? There's nothing to buy. Um, there's nothing to, I would never pay a dollar for someone who made a $10,000 website, but that's all been paid and there, there's no more money to be received. So what is important though is your presence, your online presence. How many leads do you get coming to your website naturally from client referrals, from inbound lead marketing? Like how many leads are you getting? Because you'll most likely be given an offer. Um, so for, for recurring revenues, you'll be paid a fat check for you know a, a multiple. Maybe it's 1x your annual revenues, 2x your annual revenues. You get 3x, buy me a fucking beer. Oh, sorry. Sorry. You're buy me oh, a no, beer. It's perfectly. You're, you're in a bar. That's fine. Okay. okay. Actually, he's buy, in a spaceship, me. but <laughs> <laughs> I wish I had the lights running on the <laughs> monitor uh, today, but, um, but that's, that's where a lot, large chunk of money will come from. And that, and that the other, all the offers I got were along the same vein, um, some sort of multiple on recurring revenues, and then a percentage of future revenues that will be generated from leads that get generated over the course of three years, four years, five years, something along those veins. Um, uh, and I would say go for percentage of revenues. People will bite on that. Um, 10 to 15%. If you can get that, that'll be great. Um, and what that is, it, what that means is over the course of five years, you've passed off your trust to someone to hopefully have them continue running the business because you got to have, you got to, you got to be, you know, you got to, uh, trust that they're going to still continue marketing efforts and building the brand and all that mm -hmm. stuff, generating leads because that's how you're going to get paid. So you get paid off the future project revenues that the business built. But and you then you're still, answering the the you're still answering the phone when that person calls even after you leave though. Because I mean, you have a stake in making sure that business is successful, you know? Exactly. You, you are fully, um, you remain incentivized to see it be successful. That's exactly it. And, and um, not turn around and talk shit about the new owners too. Cause you know, that happens a lot of times. Anytime somebody leaves a job and then they go and talk about how bad it is there or whatever, you know? So it's probably which, which, smart for both parties. Yeah. Which all comes down to why I chose the guy I chose. I trust him. I, I I'm like, you know what? This is where my gut's at. Everything he has done has been honest. Um, and, and it's extremely important, um, to, to trust the person you're going to work with because I'm, I, don't think I'll be contradicted with this thought, but you'll get paid a chunk of money with your recurring revenues and you'll get paid a percentage of your future revenues that your website will generate for you or your clients will refer you and stuff like that. So yeah, you got it. You have to, you have to really know this person and, and, and trust that they're going to do a good job. And I didn't know this. I mean, know this person, meaning like, you know, it's business, you know, you got to right. kind of just gauge them. Do you, mm -hmm. does your gut, do you feel good about this human being doing the right thing? So so, uh, in the, in the lessons you learned in doing this, what do you, what would you say the biggest mistake you made was? Where, what um, would you change right away if you could go back and do it? I would not have hired staff at the rate I hired at. I would have been more conscious about my recurring revenue ratio to my um, project revenue ratio in terms of how I paid out staff. Very, very. I put myself in a very, very stressful situation building up staff quickly um, and then, you know, constantly needing a lot of project revenue, about 60 to 70% project revenue to support the effort. Had I waited until I had recurring revenues covering 
50 to 70% and then I staffed, I think I would have been in a lot less stressful of a, of an environment. Um, so I, I was, um, I was just, you know, naive and in my twenties thinking I'm going to be a billionaire, all that stuff that I'm sure right. many of us have gone through and think I'm going to just staff up, staff up, you know, it, but that's risk people. That is because you're going to end up caring about these people's livelihoods and making sure they're taken care of. Like, or you should, or yeah. you should. Yeah. yeah. I can't relate to people who don't like, care. Like I just, I struggle relating to people like that, but you should, because you're going to have relationships with these people. Like, and I'm not saying like, have like, super crazy relationship I'm just good business strong relationships show that right. you're a leader and everything but anyways yeah that would be the m- biggest mistake i made was staffing too quickly um i think really anyone looking to do an exit strategy that's in a one person shop type mode right now um hiring doing a very diligent job at interviewing people to be like your first employee um i think is a really good idea um uh someone that is maybe um uh, very organized, um, very cri- uh, good critical thinking skills. It's awesome asking, um, um, what is it like, uh, riddle questions? Like you know, like in job interviews, asking like questions that are like you know logic based questions, and having them think that think out logic right in front of you, because that's going to tell you if they're if they um, can critically think through things and like process things. So w- your first employee could be that person that kind of oversees the operations of the business one day and, and create the operating procedures with that person or create them and then give them to them to improve upon and make better and better. And then, and, and so that's where I would start. I would start with, I'm so, I'm blabbering so much, uh, but, but don't staff too quickly and then um, come into, come to the table with your first employee with operating procedures or just something that gives this person a breadth of understanding of what they're going to be doing on a daily basis. So do you think that there's a difference because, um, you know, a lot of the people in our group and a lot of the people that are doing this solo, their first step is typically, you know, when they're, they're pulling on new help, uh, it's to outsource and to have like a team of outsourcers versus employees. Um, I think that, you know, an actual physical in you know brick and mortar or like someone that is just dedicated to you is probably valued more. But um, you know, with these people that do have multiple uh, you know facets of, of uh, outsourcing, one person does SEO, one person does you know branding, logo design, etc. Um, what's what what would you say the difference there is? So well. I was the situation I was in was I had staff, so I used that to my advantage when selling the business. But um, just thinking off the top of my head here, if you are because I go back to how a company will buy you, they'll buy you a multiple of recurring revenues and they'll buy you on future leads that your business generates. That equation does not require you to have employees. Mm-hmm. So if you have, I would say, if you have an outstanding long term relationship with an outsourcing firm or maybe a couple people, and you can show an uh, an ongoing relationship to them. And show that 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 hey these people are around for the long haul. That I think will speak volumes as well. Not to mention that keeps payroll down big time. Right. Um, so there is a huge benefit to that to anyone buying your business. Um, and uh, so, so yeah, I would say if you go the outsourcing route, go that route. Build good relationships. For me, I was an idiot, and I just thought you hire people. I I, I was <laughs> so naive in 2012 uh, about all this. I thought you just hire employees. You know, I didn't, I didn't even realize about this outsourcing thing. Uh, I didn't even realize about the admin bar until I sold the company and met you guys. Like, uh, like so I've done so many things wrong, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> like this outsourcing thing, the way um, so many of these white label agencies like have these great relationships with these web designers. I'm like, man, the, this is, this keeps your payroll down. This keeps your risk down. You just focus on generating more business in building those recurring revenues and and that's what you're ultimately going to sell is all the business that your website generates and all the recurring revenue that you have so so um we we we've we've definitely touched on the uh the the part on your own business and you know prepping that getting everything set and ready but when you are at that point and you know you are actively trying to sell how do you tell your clients do you tell your clients? I mean, I, I definitely think that I would, but um, like, what 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 do you say? You know, hey, by the way, I'm ditching you, and somebody else is going to be taking care of you. You know, I've done my due diligence to uh, to make sure that they're as as good as they can be. But I, I can see like concern coming from a lot of clients. So yeah, um, what happened? Uh, 
with that is that, well, I, I should first note, I did not have, is, is I was running a team. So I had employees that were managing accounts. I think that is an important factor. Mm-hmm. Um, but I had some of the bigger accounts under my name. Um, the new business buyer is very, very incentivized to keep those clients around. So I would say, don't be so worried about how you're going to communicate it. Um, Be ready for them to share ideas on how they're going to communicate it. Um, Because it's their job. From that day you sign on, it's theirs. It's their do. So they don't forget the fact that they're incentivized to help you in crafting the right wording um for us i think it was literally just an email campaign um i mean this this guy had a track record of acquiring companies and providing a great service offering to thousands of clients and has a huge staff like so it was an easy slam dunk you know like all right get rid of the bald sweaty hans and put in this guy who, who knows what he's doing you know we we, we painted a picture of this person's going to take you to the next level um which he's he's going to so that's awesome. Yeah. And like you said, you know, like having their voice in there too, and almost as a, as a dominant voice, it's already, you know, kind of, uh, getting the clients to understand like how they communicate and how they talk and all of that stuff, like while you're still there. So it's an easier transition. Yes. This guy jumped right in saying, Hey, the, we, uh, there's been a few transitions in terms of ownership. You know, we're, we're in control. Here's a little bit about us and, and, you know, uh, all else is normal. We're going to keep going through and we can't wait to provide you great services. Cool. It's really, it, you, I was astonished at how few clients called me after I sold the business. <laughs> like, and a little like, hurt. Oh, that's an eye opener. <laughs> like eye opener. I mean, right. I had very good relationships and I think I got two phone calls from my hundreds of clients, like hundreds right. of clients that we've built websites for. We had about a hundred uh, maintenance clients, right? Yeah, it was- oh, I hate I hate to cut us off here, but I do have a hard deadline that I have to get out of here for. And I do want to leave a few minutes in here. I heard that you have a company called Termageddon. And if anybody hasn't heard about it, I want to give a few minutes here to talk about what Termageddon is and how we could kind of even tie this into if if part of your exit strategy is building some recurring revenue uh, and being able to do that, Termageddon actually fits into those plans nicely. So I know you want to do it. You're itching to do it. Let's do it. Let's talk about Termageddon <laughs> for a few minutes. Thank you. I appreciate it. It. Um, and and for the, before I jump into it, like I am so passionate about like helping businesses with this. Like, if you want some thoughts or advice, like call me um, or email me. Start with an email: Hans at termagen.com. H A N S at termagen.com. I'm not going to leave my cell phone just because I don't yeah, know. It's don't the know. internet. Um, but yeah, it's the internet. You know. Um, but uh, Hans at termagen.com. Shoot me an email. Like I would be more than happy to talk you through this because I know how stressful it was for me and like it really should not have been. It's doing business. Um, it's, it's really just kind of, it's, it's easy. It's, it's easy once you have kind of perspective on it, but, mm-hmm. uh, but yeah, Termageddon. So um, Termageddon is what I've moved into. It's with my fiance, Donata. She's the president and she's the attorney behind the company. Uh, Termageddon is a privacy policy generator that automatically updates whenever the laws change. Um, I got the question all the time from my clients, what should I do for a privacy policy? Typically about three days before site launch and it typically delayed my projects and uh, I would have to wait till they hired an attorney or used a template and 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 I don't get me started on that but um, the fact is is um, the industry is trending towards valuing data privacy this is something we can't ignore come January 1st Californians are going to be able to sue businesses anywhere in the US for not having a privacy policy there's about a dozen other states that are implementing their own sets of laws which are going to enable their clients or uh, their clients their citizens kind of like clients, uh, to sue businesses anywhere in the U.S. for not having a privacy policy. With Termageddon, we are a completely web agency partnership-focused privacy policy terms and conditions generator uh, where we give web agencies a free set of policies, no questions asked, um, in the hopes that you like what you see. And if you do, uh, we absolutely would love for you to refer us to your clients using our reseller program so that you can make recurring revenues. You can proactively help protect your clients. Um, and you can look like an all-star talking about what's happening in this industry and that, you know, you're on top of this stuff. And it's, you know, and 
attorneys are typically four grand for a privacy policy in terms of conditions. We're a hundred bucks a year to end clients and we automatically update. So it would take 40 years to pay for one bill uh, by going through Termageddon and we'll automatically update whenever the laws change. So yeah. And if you, uh, so. if you haven't checked it out, basically you go, hey, you log into your Termageddon account, you answer a few questions about the website. It spits you out a little bit of code. You paste that into the privacy policy page and boom, it's done. And so when January 1st rolls around and California has this new law in effect and something needs to be changed on there, you don't have to remember anything. Uh, Donata is taking care of that behind the scenes uh, and that, that website's going to stay up to date and you're all good to go. And it's something that Matt and I are both using. So, I mean, you could go to either one of our websites or go to the admin bar and check out our privacy policies and you can see exactly what it looks like. Um, and it's something uh, you've been sponsoring our show for a while. So we appreciate that. Um, and it's something we're super excited about and actually growing our recurring revenue with. Yeah. And right. It's amazing. Yep. Um, you know, you send out that, that email, like the mass email to, uh, I, I installed it on all the, the, the care plan clients that I have and That's awesome. sent out like a, just a short brief saying like, Hey, this is what I did. Don't worry about it. You're all covered. Kind of explained it just very briefly. And, uh, I mean, almost all of them responded with, thanks. Like that, that rocks. Like, thank you for looking That's out awesome. for my best interest, et cetera. Like it's a, it's a feel good. It's, it's like a feel good feeling and it, it everybody wins. It's very cool. That's great. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And, and for anyone watching this, if you, if you're still watching this, like, and, and you haven't gone past the promo that I'm running, <laughs> reach out to Hans at term again and be like Hans, or you'd said in the video recording, you'd hook me up with a deal and I'll figure out something between now and then. No doubt. And, you know, you talked about when you sold your agency wanting to find the right person and, uh, you know, trust them and stuff. Y'all have been so awesome. Uh, we really enjoy hanging out with you and Donato. Uh, so go back and watch the video with Donato in it. But uh, I really enjoy working with y'all and I'm so glad to be able to support y'all and help promote your business on the show because I think it's awesome and I think y'all are awesome. So you guys yeah. have been life changing for us. Like it's Love Fest. bar is like the best thing that has ever happened to me because I was always so I always never, I thought never talk to competitors, you know, just stupid me yet again. And then I find the admin bar and like everyone is like having the same stresses and the same wins. And it's just the most beautiful thing. So thank you so much for letting me still be a member, even though I've sent a few, you know, leading posts. Uh, but, but thank you so much yeah, to the greatest lot, company in the world. I think you need to redo the greatest song in the world into the greatest company of the world. <laughs> And also it can, on that. yeah, it can be a, the new term again commercial. All right. I do got to get out of here guys. So, uh, thank you so much Hans for coming in and talking to us about this. And if anybody has any questions we didn't get to, like Hans said, he's in the group or you can email him Hans at term He'll be glad to help you out. I know the first time I talked to him, he sent me his cell phone number, so he'll, he'll probably do it. He's just not going to do it on this video. I'm so uh, tempted to right now. I know. Don't do <laughs> yeah, it. Don't it's, do it's it. We'll it. Okay. All right. Okay. So, all right, guys, thanks so much. And as a reminder, if this group helps you in any way. The easiest way to help us is to share the content, subscribe to our channel and use our affiliate links. It's all free. It takes little time and it greatly helps support the show. That's all for now. And we will see you all inside the group. Bye. There's going to be laughing in this episode. I think so. I think so too. <laughs> and crying. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs>